Now, when you think of a country with technological innovations, Israel may not immediately come to mind. But in the past few years, it has become a hotbed tech hub. The country, which was recently dubbed Startup Nation, is now bringing that technology across the Atlantic Ocean and setting up shop in New York City. From the streets of Tel Aviv to the hustle and bustle of New York City, Israeli tech fever has swept across the U.S. and New York is now experiencing a so-called Israeli tech boom. Israel has the highest density of tech startups in the world. By some counts, Israel is home to around 5,000 startups and ranks second to Silicon Valley when it comes to tech innovation. Today, there are 68 Israeli tech firms trading on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange. With all that ripe innovation and entrepreneurship, it's little many to the global marketplace. Eyal Bino is the founder of Worldwide Investor Network, a platform that helps international tech startups get access to funding, investors and mentors. He says that some of the hottest startups come from Israel. First three years of WIN, uh, we showcased about 58 companies from all over the world, really from every corner of the world. Uh, 21 out of the 58 companies were Israeli and 19 of them uh, ended up raising money and growing their companies. Uh, one company actually was uh, sold to uh, Priceline uh, about three months ago. So clearly the best innovation came from Israel. Global tech giants all seem to agree with that statement. In fact, some of the world's biggest tech companies have been on a shopping spree, spending billions of dollars on Israeli tech firms and fueling the appetite of Israeli entrepreneurs. Last year, Facebook bought Israeli mobile analytics firm Onavo for close to $200 million. Google acquired Israeli social mapping firm Waze for $1.3 billion. IBM snapped up security startup Trustier for about $1 billion. Apple bought 3D motion sensor firm PrimeSense for $350 million. Samsung acquired streaming firm Boxy for $30 million. AOL bought video advertising platform Adapt TV for $400 million. And those are just the deals that were made public. Alan Cutter is the CEO and founder of AC Lion. As a tech and digital media recruiter, Cutter also invests in Israeli tech companies. He says the tech talent coming out of Israel is unsurpassable. One of the greatest things I've learned from a venture capitalist is you invest in technology. And some people invest in, in either the, the engineers and other people like to invest in the people that sell the technology. And I think investing in the engineers is the most important thing because the value in a company often is in the technology. And that's what Israel is like supremely known for. The Israeli government plays a pivotal role in the success of many tech entrepreneurs. Most Israelis are expected to join the army for a few years, and it's there that they gain exposure to advanced technology and defense systems. Gil Harrell is the vice president of business development at Como, one of the world's largest app makers and the subsidiary of Israeli billion-dollar tech firm Conduit. Harrell says U.S. investors believe in Israeli companies and are eager to invest. Israel is, is focused on education, it's focused on tech. Um, you start these educations from you're a kid and then when you go to the armies there's a lot of special units uh, like computer units and intelligence units that teach you the best school in, in the world for tech and then people come out of it and they start really good uh, successful companies and people want to be close to that talent and I think that's why investors are, are um, attracted to this kind of uh, companies. Today Israeli startups in New York are growing at the same rate if not faster than their local counterparts. With access to more consumers, more investors and more money, Israel entrepreneurs continue to flock to the concrete jungle. Another uh, trend that I'm noticing is um, actually uh, tech developers who are looking to move here. So not just CEOs of startups, but tech developers because there's such a shortage of engineers in New York and it's so hard to find tech talent that now, you know, tech talent, you know, engineers basically saying, well, why do I have to stay here? I can make so much more money in New York and being in the best city in the world. 